A lot of our, our, uh, our community and a lot of the communities around it are, uh, there's a lot of oppressive gender role def definition and it oppresses women and it, and it really it oppresses the men too, you know, that the, the limits of what you can be Absolutely. based on your gender is an oppression to both genders and all genders in between. And so, so much uh, female violence, it seemed to me, got turned back, people were turning it back in on themselves. And, but then there were, um, I just was, I mean, I, I just, I mean, you know, you love everybody, but I just loved a lot of these women that were coming through my life that refused to turn it in on themselves and that were uh, lashing out and sometimes in um, not particularly productive, self, you know, healthy ways, but were just refused to um, give in. And, you know, it's like people like that, when you refuse, I mean, literature, I mean, a lot of my favorite movie characters are always that person that refuses to give in. I think about, you know, Randall Patrick McMurphy and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest that, um, and that's so often. Daniel Woodrow, I'll mention him, the character in Winter's Bone. Yeah. What's her name? I forgot. Reed, Dolly. Reed Dolly. Yeah. Yeah. The, but that, that often ends tragically, right? I mean, we all like kind of anti-heroes, but that's a tough uh, road to walk and all that is you know that kind of resistance is always um, in close proximity to violence of one kind or another but um, I mean you know that's I, you know I, th I think that um, we culturize people to respond in particular ways and we were talking about this last night that uh, you know that women who write like men, like I don't know what that means, you know, but you hear people say that, 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 um, but I don't think that, you know, I don't. I, think I always feel like my job is to write like my deepest self. I really mm -hmm. love that. The thing I quote over and over and over again is Dorothy Allison saying something like, until you find the courage to go to your darkest place, your hardest place, your writing won't be worth a damn. And I sure believe that. You know that? Uh, I mean, she's a great she's example. My, great. I want to like sit at her feet. Yeah. You talk about maybe somebody 10 years. <laughs> who writes from a female perspective about violence in a compelling way. And mm -hmm. I, a big influence on me, too, was um, uh, Push by Sapphire. That, mm -hmm. that, uh, I think that I think that is such an amazing book. But then every time I try and excerpt it to use it in something, it just I'm just like I, I've never found an excerpt in it that I could read out loud and not feel like I was um, stealing somebody's identity or something. You know, it's mm -hmm. just. Uh, but another masterpiece of voice, another masterpiece of um, violence, and that that comes from a female perspective. I want to hear some questions from you guys. Uh, we've only got, I think, what, 10 minutes? So could I turn that over to you? Questions about anything we've been talking about or anything that you want to know about from these um, masters of the word about the writing life? Um, Yeah. Do you want to? Um, Did you ask it? <laughs> you? I haven't asked it yet. <laughs> I didn't think so. This is a thick <laughs> You're right. You're joking that. We assumed that it was a graphic novel, which it is not. It is an illustrated novel. What is the difference? And then what? Excellent question. Skyping. Um, so the question is. What's the difference between a graphic novel and illustrated novel, and what on earth was I thinking? When, <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of graphic novels. I think that uh, every serious reader should read uh, Mouse by Art Spiegelman, and Alison Bechdel's work is incredible. 
and uh, Chris Ware, um, his Jimmy Corrigan book, the, the smartest boy in the world, or whatever it's called, but Chris Ware, that they are working at such a high level of integrating visual material with writing, with wordsmithing, that... Um, and it was it, deceptively simple. I thought this, yes, it was going to be, this, when I tried to teach it, it was really hard. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's some the, the best of those people um, are, I feel like they're kind of working in a space that pulls some of the most interesting intellectual stuff out of filmmaking and writing and combining it all in one space. So this is all to say, I just wasn't good enough to do a graphic novel, and also mm -hmm. I wasn't young enough. It's like, the, and the other thing is, if you ever read interviews with those people, they all are, uh, they lead lonely, their lives are lonelier than ours, right? It's like they, uh, not only do they have to think of the story, then they got to draw those pictures over and over. But that said, it's like I drew before I wrote, and so I was very interested in, in that, and after I had worked on the novel a while and it wasn't getting, uh, I wasn't getting published, I'm like, well, I'm just going to do this the way I want to. And so I did it just like I wanted to, which is to have some pictures. I think the other thing was because I was interested in oral narration, that um, I like the idea that you could see her talking to you, right? That every once in a while she would look you in the eye and say something. Another question from, I'm sorry, I was being a fangirl. I think, I think the hashtag? That, well, ultimately, I think Ian, nobody else has ever done that. Hmm. It, it, when, it, when you ask that, I, I whispered in his ear, Gypie, and, 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 I, and that's what it makes me think of. You know, when you attach an author to it, when you make it adjectival, so it's like Chaucer to Chaucerian or something, that novel's Gypian. Nobody else that has written. Not, what did you say? What was that last It's, it's Gypian. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, he has invented his own, own genre, I thought, and it's brilliant. Uh, if you haven't read it, you should read it. Thanks. Some Thanks, David. Yes, Larry. Uh, following up on, on two comments, one you made about trafficking in stereotypes, and, and then your comment about Appalachia's one thing, it's many things. As a publisher, I, I get a lot of literature that's set in Appalachia, and I reject almost all of it because it, it doesn't transcend that level of mm. just stereotypes. So how, how do you, as authors, uh, approach this uh, this boundary of being of, of honoring the tradition, but somehow transcending the stereotypes and the mindset that everybody has about what is Appalachia. I'll take that first because I'm uh, I'm the guy from Washington D.C. <laughs> coming down into Eastern Kentucky and writing about Eastern Kentucky, and hmm. um, you know I. Uh, Kentucky is my adopted state, and I absolutely love that region, and, and I knew I wanted to write a novel about it. But I also knew not being from there, I had to do it in, in a way that was, um, that was realistic uh, and authentic, uh, but without being stereotypical. Uh, and, um, and, so, and so I just got to know the people and the place. And I think once you do that, um, you know, you realize it's, it's actually not that different. You know, what, what people in Eastern Kentucky care about is no different than what they care about in Annapolis, Maryland, when I'm, where I'm from. You know, it's, you know they, they want a good job, they want a good school for their kids, and, and they, 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 they want to create a family, good family environment, you know, for themselves and for their, their children. So uh, I found that was one of the kind of really eye-opening things for me when, when I uh, first went down to Eastern Kentucky to research the novel. Uh, you know, it's not that different. The needs of, of the folks are just uh, the same. It's, it's a universal thing. I won't touch on that guy. Go ahead. Uh, it's it's kind of similar to that other question for me in the sense that I don't think about it. Uh, I'm probably like one of the least cerebral people you ever meet. But uh, hmm. I tell the story that I want to tell, and I don't worry about I think that I think the what separates art a lot of time is uh, is a matter of fear and fearlessness. I tell the story I want to write. Uh, is it a story that's very different from the Appalachia of Silas House, a parchment of leaves? Yes, it is. Is it an Appalachia that's very different from Robert Gipe's trampoline? Yes, it is. We don't have coal. Our coal mining was land development where I live. Uh, have you lived away from Appalachia? Yeah. yeah. I grew and up in Charlotte. So what happens? 
I think about that all the time. What happens to my voice when I'm away, and what happens to it when I long, you know, I long to go home, and what happens to it then? I think that's the, the only voice I ever hear. Uh, is the voice you are. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, what interests me is uh, I th it's only outsiders. It's, when it's a matter of talking about stereotypes, it's typically an outsider trying to understand something. And I think it's our, and, it's, it's human nature to try to compartmentalize something in a way that you can, that you can understand it. And the only way to do that is to, is to put boundaries around it and say, this is what it is. Well, no, that's not yes. what it is. And I can show you, you know, I can show you Silas House's Appalachia, but I can show you his Appalachia, or I could show you mine, or I could show you a kid whose parents were millionaires who came from Florida and he's growing up in Jackson County. You know, and his, Appala his experience of Appalachia is just as authentic as somebody who's, whose family goes back there to the first land grants. They're both authentic experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so I, I never think about it. I, I write the story I, that I want to write. Uh, and, then, and then the nice thing is that then you have a forum like this where it becomes a conversation, and that's when I can say, well, no, that's not what I'm saying, or no, that's not Appalachia. Uh, and the minute that you're able to have that dialogue. Uh, my fear for myself as someone who lives away and away and away is that I'm writing uh, memories only, writing shadows after a while and not the real voice, the real thing. Um, I worry about that. That I make those boxes for myself in order to feel connected. Anybody else? Question? Are we about, okay. Thank you all, this is wonderful. I could just sit and talk to you all the rest of the afternoon. Mm -hmm.